Today, I'm going to show you how to change your Windows font so it's a little bit nicer or easier to read or all up to you. You can make it worse. Anyways, the first thing you need to do is go to the first link in the description and you will see Get Mac Type. Click on that button. It'll say a whole bunch of stuff. Click Got It. Take me to file and it'll take you to the file and download it. Then after you download it, you need to go to Google Fonts and there are a whole bunch of fonts you can choose from. I'm going to pick something that is very hard to read because I just love giving myself the worst experience on Windows. So I'm going to use Keybrang, I'm not even going to try. There's only one style, but you want to click on it, then you want to click Download Family. So this is for any font that you want. Just click on the font, then click Download Family, and this is specifically on Google Fonts. Next up, you want to open up the Mac Type installer, and you should see a couple of things pop up. This one first, you need to press Yes, and then you finally get the installer. Press OK, press Next, press I accept the agreement, even though you didn't read it. Press Next, press Next and press next, and next again, and next, and install. There's a lot of parts of this installer, but just go through it, then click finish, and press yes, and now it'll open up Mac type. So now you can see there's this change log, don't worry about that at all, and you will see Mac type wizard. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna click on load with Mac tray. There are a whole bunch of options, but load with Mac tray seems to be the best because there is a mode where you can just go to your taskbar and turn it off, which is what we want just in case there's any issues. So click load with Mac tray, click run as administrator, and click standalone mode, and click next. Then it will start the preview, and after a little bit of waiting, you get to select your preferred font profile. So first off, ignore that symbol right there, but next up you actually need to install your font. So I'm going to open up the zip file, you will get a font file. Now here's a quick trick for a whole bunch of you Windows users. Copy all of the fonts inside this, assuming there's multiple, copy them, go to your downloads and paste them in, then press the Windows key, type in a font and press enter. You'll see this little settings window, drag it to the left, then drag your downloads to the right and select every single font. So if there's multiple, you'd select them all. Then drag them into this little section here, drag and drop to install, and that will install a whole bunch of fonts in a row so you don't have to do it manually. Trust me, I use this all the time. And once your fonts all install, you just need to close that window and close your downloads, and we need to go back to the Mac type window thing user experience, and you will see a whole bunch of fonts. Now, if you installed your font right here, you might not be able to see it, so you need to click Add New Profile, click New Profile. Then once you do that, click Next then you need to select the font that you want. So this is the preview, and on the right is your font selector. So I already forgot what my font was called, but I just remembered it. I'm going to pick Q, I'm not even gonna try. Click next on the font once you select it, and you have a couple of settings. You have tuning mode will make it so that fonts are easier or harder to read. Just pick one of these options that look the best to you. I'm gonna do auto tuning, cause I wanna trust this application. I'm gonna press next. Then you have anti-aliasing mode, so all you need to do is just click on each one of these options and see which one you like the most. So for me, I'm going to do LCD RGB and press next. Next up is the bold mode. Now the bold mode basically is just the same as all the other options. Just click through each one of the settings and pick the one you like the most. Remember that bold mode only affects the bottom half here. These are all normal letters and the ones underneath are the bolded letters. So I'm going to do two-way bold, then press next. And we have another option. You have tons of options for this, but all you need to do is just change these sliders. So in my case, I have adjusted the font to make it at least easier to read because I know I'm gonna have to go through this at one point to uninstall it. And once you've mucked around with the sliders to make it look exactly how you want it, click next. And now we have another option. We have bold weight. So you can change the bold weight to be either more bold or less bold. Just mess around with it. And if it looks good, then press the next button. Same thing with italics. So this is too italicized for you. Well, you can make it vertical. You can. I'm gonna make it go to the left because that's just awful. Click next. So, what, like literally, there, there's just so many options. Just play with the sliders and press next. And if it's already perfect the way it is, then just press next. And the font shadow. There's so many options in this thing. Just, just. Uh, oh my gosh, that's awful. So I would keep font shadow to near, so you don't have to see it. But I want my font to be really hard to read, so I'm gonna make it worse. And now we have LCD mode. So you can do optimizations to make it look better. Once again, just pick the one that you think looks the best and click next. Then you can click save. And now you need to save it as something. I'm going to call this I pain and press enter. Then I can press okay. Now all I need to do is just actually install and use the font. And as you notice, I pain is hidden behind this folder. So if you have this weird little bug, just press previous, then press next and it will automatically adjust, and if you scroll down, you should find iPane, or whatever you named it. All you need to do is just double click on it and click finish, then click OK, and once it's done, you will see that there's a whole bunch of green text, and close, just click on close, and now look at, uh, oh, it's, oh, now this is beautiful. I have my new file explorer, and wow, 
I wish I didn't have eyes. But in all honesty, you can actually use this to change it to whatever font you want. For example, if you were dyslexic and you found a font that was easy to read compared to the traditional Windows font, you could actually use that and implement it so it's a lot easier to use your computer. Or if you're a font nerd like me, you could just change the Windows font to whatever you want so it looks more modern, or in my case, looks more ancient. It looks like Windows XP. Anyways, let's just say you want to stop, for example, like let's say, ah, I can't use the file explorer, but everything else is exactly what I wanted. All you need to do is go down to your taskbar, then right click on Mac type, and you just need to click disable. And what it will do is disable it so you can actually read what's going on. And that's really helpful if you have specific applications that just don't work with this, because that can happen, you can have incompatibilities, but just keep that in mind. Now let's say you want to change the font to something else, all you need to do is just click on the drop down menu, the icon will change since I have it disabled, you need to right click on it, then click on Mac type wizard, and that will allow you to press next, then what it'll allow you to do is import your different fonts and stuff like normal, which is nice, and let's say you have all of your fonts installed and set up and you just want to swap between two different ones, all you need to do is go down to your hidden menu bar thing, right click on Mac type, once again the icon's different because it's disabled, then click on any one of the font profiles you made. So I'm going to do iOS because I think it looks nice. And now, I now have the iOS font, which I actually think looks really good. Like, really good. What the... I mean, I'm going to stick with that. And that wraps up the installation portion of the video. If it worked, like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel even further, just turn off your ad blocker when you watch my videos. And if for some odd reason it didn't work out for you, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or join my Discord and put your issue in the help channel and I will help you out as soon as I can. Now let's get on to the uninstall portion of the video. Let's say it's the end of the world, you don't want to use Mac type anymore or something like that. All you got to do is go back down to the menu, right click and click disable. And once you disable it, it should be back to normal. And with that, you can click on the start menu, type add or remove programs and press enter, search for Mac type, click on it and click on install, press on install, press yes. Then it'll say back up your profiles or whatever. You could back up your profiles if you want, but if you're uninstalling it, chances are you don't want it anymore. So press yes, it will uninstall. Then you need to restart your computer. So press yes. And by the end of it, guess what? You're going to have a normal Windows computer again with the not cool font that I made. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I'd show you that the font works exactly correctly, but I have a Windows update. So therefore, I'm going to lick a 9 volt battery and then move my way up to licking a car battery. Have a fantastic night. I love you. Mwah.